Hey guys, welcome back. Brand new build series, part number one of Tsukimura's brand new release, the BF109. Hey, welcome back. Richie here from RW Hobbies. And we can get started with the engine on this beautiful kit, Zugimora's 109. Um, no resin, no photo apps, just old school injection molded plastic, which is absolutely exquisite. Um, and I can't wait to get started. Well, full disclosure, I've built the engine already. I have um, went to upload all the footage to my computer to edit and get it up onto um, YouTube and realized I actually did that accidentally deleted from my, um, my camera here the intro, so I'm re-recording it. So, spoiler alert, I've built the engine, it's absolutely fantastic. It's, yeah, it's detail, you're in for a treat with this one. If you're on the fence, I'll tell you right now, go and buy it um, for $95, it's an amazing kit. It's better than a Tamiya 30 second scale stuff, it's just on a different level, and it just fits together so well, so nicely detailed, and it's plastic, it's not like you're falling around with photo etch and um, other parts, morning media stuff. So, I can mention we're going to do the engine, this part, we're going to talk through it all. I'm not going to go through soup to nuts, like gluing plastic together or talking about every single step. I'm just going to go through, um, there's so much to this, I'm going to keep it like high level for the advanced kind of modeler. So, I'm going to go through it, um, see how it all fits, and then let you know how it goes together, go through some color call outs, that kind of stuff. But nothing, you know, we're not going to be gluing plastic together, like hours on end on the camera here, it'd be pretty punchy. So... What I will do is, I, what I will mention is, I think throughout, as I edit this, I think some of the, some of the subsequent parts in this will mention about, you can have the, the, the engine out or um, you can have it in. And um, I think I talked about I wasn't decided. Well, I can show you right now on the camera actually. Let's show you something here. If you have the engine out, there is way less detail. Um, so here, if you see on the camera here, um, if you have it out on the stand, which I was thinking about having it next to the aircraft, you're missing out all this pipe work, all this two or three pages worth of detail. You're basically going from here um, on page 11. So my recommendation would be to put it, in, put it in the aircraft, get all that beautiful detail, use it, and um, just have it fully open. So I think I kind of forgot to mention, but I'm going to do this fully open. So there's so much detail in this, in this kit um, just throughout the whole thing. I'm not going to cover it up with panels. I'm going to have this thing bare bones. You can see the wing wing um, frames, wing spars, you're going to see all the framing inside, you're going to see the engine, um, the actual camouflage kind of covering panels on this will be pretty limited. Um, we'll see how we go with the, with the build, how, how exactly how we'll do it, because I'm not sure yet So I get to those stages. Um, it might be a point where just half of the aircraft is skinned, excuse me, the other half is just open with a frame, because again, I don't want to waste all this beautiful detail on here, I want to show it. Um, does come with a figure, and um, who knows, if I'm feeling a bit frisky, I might do a little bit of a diorama, like a workshop diorama, maybe with this thing open with a figure and maybe some like mini art tools and stuff on a bench. I don't know if I'll go that far, but we'll get at least through the aircraft and do it open and see how we go from there. So what is kind of neat with this, going back to instructions, is that it tells you each section, what you got going on in each one, and you got 66 parts. So 66 parts to build the motor with the engine, um, and that's what it's going to look like when we're finished. Now, don't be intimidated by these instructions, because as I've gone through here, um, the key with this is just do a page at a time, as I talk through um, in a little bit. And if you look at each page, there's really only probably four or five parts being assembled. It's um, just a lot of different views, a lot of color callouts. Color callouts kind of to the right here, and the bottom here as well, you have the paint colors, which is kind of neat. It does mention silver and black um, a lot. I don't, as you, as you see for this video too, I have luxury of having built it already. Um, I didn't use every silver for every single pipe. I used just a smorgasbord of metallics, um, aluminum, stainless steels. Every single pipe pretty much was a different color, just to add some visual interest to it. Um, so that's kind of how we did. So you're basically working your way through here. So we're going to start with the engine block and crank, um, cam covers, propeller shaft, basic block. And then by the time you get to here, that's probably stopping point. And then, you know, to get things painted. And then you can sort of paint things individually as you go. And that kind of super glued them on. So all different piping. So you've got spark plug cords, air intake parts, pipes, um, superchargers. It's kind of great because, again, it explains exactly what you're doing, what a part is. So if you're into engineering, you're literally building this from the soup to nuts um, up as you would build a real aircraft pretty much. 
Um, they've even got pistons inside the engine, not that you see them once it's put together. Um, then you go through, adding some engine mounts, um, some framing, cooling fluid, a vapor plate, vapor filters, again through here, cooling fluid tanks, pipes, flywheels, exhaust pipes, and you're done. So about eight pages or so. So that's kind of what got going on ahead here. You can see, you know, what a good layout here. Again, it looks very intimidating, but you're only on a couple of pieces a page. It's not just a lot of different diagrams, which is great. These instructions are absolutely fantastic. So I think it's time to get started. So let me put this away and um, let's get started with the engine. Okay, so I've worked my way through the first two pages here and um, first two pages of the instructions and although it looks very complex, it's actually really nice to follow and there's only a couple of parts going on each section. So it tells you where to cut off all the, I never, like this, it tells you where to cut off all the extra parts, the, like the um, ejection pin marks and stuff. Um, it's really nice to follow and, and I love the part down the side here, it gives you colors and also gives you um, what it is. So it says, okay, this is the coolant pump or you've got the cam cover. So you, as you're building, you're kind of learning what you're doing, some engineering to it. So that's sweet. So as you can see here, this is what we've got. And these guys are loose. The um, spark plug lead cables right here. And all did it in one lot. I didn't paint separately the first two pages because it's all going to be pretty much black. So there's no point. Um, there's a couple of little tiny parts here and there. It should be silver, which we can easily hand paint. Um, but I figured, hey, so if it's all the same color, there's no point painting it separately, right? So did all this. The only problem I had was this guy should be loose for the prop where it spins and it's very tight. Mine doesn't turn. So um, I tried with some pliers and actually kind of bent it. So I had to kind of bend it back in shape a little bit there. Um, so that was my, my bad there, but looking really good so far. Still plenty more parts to go on. So I'm at the stage now where I'm going to paint this um, black and I'm going to use Mr. Service at 1500 black. And these guys, the um, spark plug cords, are going to be painted silver per the instructions. Now, I, I looked on some stuff online. I don't want to paint everything, you know, a sparkling silver. It looks slightly darker. So I'm, I've got this lying around some dark aluminum, which I'm going to use um, AK Street Metals. But you no, know, don't, don't get hung up on the colors. Um, just something not not super sparkly, just something more muted, um, kind of metallic is what you need. Um, look at my picture here. Um, but yeah, I'm going because I'm going to use silver in other parts. And I want again, I want tonal differences here and different shades and stuff. So I'm going with dark aluminium or aluminum um, for these two guys. I'm going to paint this black, and then I'll we'll attach these. And that's the first two pages done. The other parts on the next couple of pages, which get on well, really like a page and a half left of the engine, and then it's getting like framing. Um, I'm gonna like here the um, intake pipe. Um, other parts it's black but I'm not going to use Mr. Service of 1500 I'm going to use maybe Tamiya flat black because then we get a little bit of contrast of different colors and stuff so first two pages like I said work through here to the end of page nine this guy's going to paint it Mr. Service of 1500 black I'm going to also paint Service 15 so Mr. <laughs> hardest I'm, I'm talking too fast Mr. Service of 1500 black will also get sprayed on these guys um, as a primer base coat um, whenever you do metallics always good to put black down first so that will get done once this dries, I'll hit it down with the aluminum and then we can attach it. And there we go. So yeah, I'll get that done and um, we can move on with the rest of it. Right, so gone through the first three pages now of the instructions and most of the engine kind of is done here. So you can kind of see what we've got going on. Like that. And how do we get here? So. Painted it as we mentioned. Um, I did paint a few parts flat black, and um, you know what? It makes no difference. It looks exactly the same as the um, <laughs> Mr. Service of 1500 black, so that's kind of a waste of time. So, yeah, Mr. Service of 1500 black, pretty much a um, couple of parts um, hand painted afterwards with the aluminium. Model Air, if you're new to the channel, I talk about this every build video. Um, these are great, even though it's air for airbrush, they're great for hand painting. So, um, this is what I use a lot for detail work, um, you know, various pipes and stuff. All this was painted um, with the dark aluminum and glued on um, after, and then, yeah, so we got all put together. And then you can see we've got a little bit of dry brushing going on. 
Now, my favorite dry brushing of late um, is Citadel's Dry Necron Compound. And if I open it, <laughs> you see it's a very kind of claggy, I'm not sure how to explain it, like jelly kind of thick paste, I guess. Um, it's not like a runny paint by any means. And um, it just, it's designed for dry brushing. So what I've done basically is take my brush here, um, just load it up, dipped it in, and then wiped off all the excess here on a paper towel, as you can see, and just ran over all the high points. And it gives you that nice kind of effect, pick up details, and also gives the engine some kind of worn look. Um, here, I think it went up too much. I got a Q-tip to wipe it, and I created a um, happy mistake, I guess. I, I created kind of, you know, way too much metallic there, but it looks like the engine's worn. So it actually looks pretty neat. Um, it's kind of weathering. See there, so that's a little happy accident going on, but it's looking really good. Um, all spark plug leads and stuff all done, um, and that's it. Um, we're no, not near, not done yet, so that's kind of a little update. I've got a couple more pages to go on this one with the engine, um, in this part of the video at least. So let's look at the instructions. So we've gone through um, page three, so page four basically, we're going to create the frame to go around the engine and some more pipes and we have two more pages of pipes and more parts so quite a lot more going on here i didn't realize there's so much we actually have four pages left um one more <laughs> five six six pages left okay so way more parts than i thought i thought we we're almost done so a lot more detail going on this so um, the point with this really is dry brush the block right now before you add more cake like wires and stuff on because you, it's gonna you're gonna knock it or it's gonna be hard to get into. So now you got the block done, dry brushed, which can add on top of that with more and more detail. So it's already looking awesome, um, as you can see. So we have tons more stuff left to do. So I'm gonna put this to the side and get working on next steps. Um, and then now we're at the parts where everything we pretty much do, we're gonna paint before we apply it. And we're gonna apply it with super glue um, because it's painted parts. So the block's done, um, and we're just gonna add, add to that. So yeah, so that's where we're at. So I'll get going with the rest of the stuff, start cutting some more, and um, we'll come back and see where we're at. All right, moving along here onto the second day of building the engine and um, having an absolute blast with this. It's um, really enjoyable. And you know what would be awesome, Azuki Mora just um, released the engine, but maybe, you know, like six scale or something, like, you know, maybe four or five times bigger than this. We, you know, get it, you know, like, I don't know, eight inches long or something. It'd be awesome. Um, you can just see, I'm not finished with this yet. I've still got a few more pages of stuff, but just look how we're looking here. Detail. Um, and this is all plastic, no resin or anything here. Just amazing. Look, the engineering on this. I've done nothing like, I mean, I've seen no aircraft engine like this before. It's just an absolute joy build. And um, yeah, we still got more stuff to add on it. So couple of things I figured out. Uh, I know we talked earlier about you can put this on a stand and have it outside the aircraft. But the problem is if you put on a stand, you don't have all these pipes and all this all this um, wiring and stuff going and tubes and all this stuff going on there. It's just pretty much kind of after the first couple of steps, you put it on the stand, that's it. So we don't want to miss out on all this beautiful detail. So this is definitely going to go in front of the, in front of the aircraft attached, um, all opened up so you can see it. And um, what you see I've done here is I every little... You know, all these tubing, all these like small parts here. I've used a different metallic color for every one. So it kind of shows you how nice, you know, the advantages of having different metallics in your, different brands and different types of metallics in your um, paint stash. Because, you know, Rob, it just has a more visual appeal. And I've got some more different shades coming on with the pipes I've just painted for next stage, um, some more brighter ones. But just going through basically picking different silvers, whether it be like Tamiya, LP11, um, just regular silver or going for like AK extreme metals, you know, for like a dark aluminum. I've got even got model master, um, stainless steel in there. So just, there's no rhyme or reason here. And, you know, again, not too much into historic accuracy. I mean, if you look at reference pictures and you're know, really dialed it in, but the instructions call basically for silver for all these, but just again, the visual appeal. I don't know if you can see on the camera, just always different metallic finishes and colors and stuff just really adds to this guy. Um, and what I've done is all the, um, the, the RML, RM, is it RML, RML, um, to the, um, the gray green here, I've come as I always do, I post shaded it. So what I've learned building this kit 
is post shading. I used to always spray it in the main color, let it dry, and come back and do the post shading. What I've done with this, which would work fine, is I literally just sprayed it all um, base color, then added a touch of white to my airbrush to the color cup to a little bit left, and then just immediately straight sprayed, um, you know, post shaded it, picked out certain highlights and stuff, and um, no problem at all. So it just saves a little bit of time and cleanup and stuff. So, you know, same time, it just paint just worked fine. Just again, spray the main color down appreciate it, um, add a little white, and then just post shade it, you know, to create some highlights and some visual appeal. Um, again, hopefully you can see it in the camera here. But yeah, absolutely um, delightful to build. Now, definitely the way to do this is how I'm doing it, is, is don't go too crazy. Don't cut every single 60 pieces off the sprue and then just paint them all in batches, like, you know, like 20, 30 at a time. You're gonna get lost. There's so many pipes and stuff. It's gonna be hard to figure it out. So how I'm doing it is a page at a time. So I'm looking at the page, cutting off those parts, then painting them in batches, priming them, painting them, and then then attaching them, and then moving on to the next page. And that works really well. Now you've seen the instructions. Um, they look very kind of complex, but really there's only four or five, maybe six parts per page you're actually installing. It's just tons of different pictures of different angles, which is great. Um, colors, call outs, all that kind of stuff. So all we're really doing is really cutting, like I say, cutting off half a dozen pieces, um, getting them in the paint booth, painting them, and then just a little soup, touch of super glue because um, it's painted parts. It's a very small amount, just attaching them. Um, and the key is to really just follow instructions as well because there's certain steps you do this. You know, just, I know it sounds stupid, just follow, you know, follow it in order and add the parts as it says in the instructions because you can see here there's, there's pipes going behind parts and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you just you know, attach these in the order it says in the instructions, which are fantastic, you can have no problems at all. And it looks, I think, a little bit more complex than it really is. But it's just a case, you know, it's a jigsaw puzzle. Just work your way through step by step, um, say a page at a time. And um, there we go. So I've got a couple more pages left. Um, not too much more to do. A few more pipes. And then I've got the exhaust um, stacks and that kind of stuff to go on here. But yeah, loving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the remaining parts on. And then I think I'm going to add a little wash to these, um, the gray green parts here. Um, kind of bring it out the dark parts i'm not sure if i'm gonna add any kind of wash i don't think it needs it um good with the dry brushing we did but yeah just definitely these parts need a little bit of a pin wash we'll, we'll talk about a little bit um on the video at the end but yeah so i'm gonna work ahead to get the last few parts on here um and um we'll get going all right so here she is the engine is complete um, as i mentioned what a fantastic little build model in itself and you can see it the detail involved and all pops came off, but we'll look back on no problem at all. And on the other side, all the piping on the underside, and there's a back. Hoping all this lines up and stuff and attaches to the fuselage, okay? I think it will. Um, but yeah, you can see fantastic, right? That detail involved on here. So basically put it all together, as I mentioned, just using different metallics. You can see all those piping, different metallic shade, shades and stuff. And um, just get everything, quick little wash at the end. All the, um, the greeny gray parts, I use Starship Filth, which is a nice little grime color. And the metallics, very lightly use a little bit of black. Um, black is my go-to for any metallic kind of colors. Now, um, I didn't go through this on this video. I've done many videos before. This video build series is more of like a high level advanced edition. Um, I'm not going to go through soup to nuts how to do everything because you know, this kit's so advanced, we'll be filming for, for days on end. So as I met, as I come through this video, I'm just kind of showing you how to put things together, any problems I encounter and colors I use, that kind of stuff. But you've seen me many times before, just make, make a tiny little bit of oil in here with some enamel thinner, mix it up, make a little wash and just put it onto the, put it onto the, um, the aircraft or the, the engine in this this um, area. Um, I've got other oil, like oil stain colors and all that kind of stuff, but here, just kept it simple. Again, Starship Filth for the, um, the green gray parts and um, black for the metallic. Now, I you see, I use these little containers. One ounce food portion containers from Amazon. And you get 100 for about $6, and they work great. Um, I get maybe get through like 100 every 18 months or so, so it's really cheap. And I basically use this part to mix my paint in, and these parts I use like little pallets. So you can see, um, like for example, on that side, you know, we'll put glue on whatever, you know, put a little bit of paint on for hand painting. And on the inside, it's like, a, you know, the recessed area, make a little wash up. 
Um, so you just throw them away when you're done. So that's the little thing I use. Um, do like these little, I think they're one ounce um, portion control. They're like what you get when you get food, you know, like with, with sauces or dips and stuff in when you get food, you know, to go from restaurants and stuff. Um, but great little containers. Um, that is it. So it's covered a lot, a lot of work going into this one. It's fantastic detail. Again, it's um, just bear in mind, there's no resin, there's no photo etch. This is just ejection molded plastic. And it's, you know, a lot of fun to work with and um, really love the, um, the final result here, how it's looking. I think if the whole aircraft is going to be like this, it's going to look pretty special once it's done. So I'm going to put this again in the box, put it away um, somewhere safe on the shelf. And um, so I'm not going to lose it. Oh, talking about losing things, the keen eyes of you noticed there should be two gun mounts, one on each side. We're missing one on this side. I don't know what happened to it. It's I painted it. Um, I'm sure I brought it over to my bench. I just can't find it anywhere. So it disappeared. I've checked the trash. I've can. I've checked the floor. My hands and knees. I'm sure it'll come up one day. If not, it's not a big deal. It's not a major part. But yeah, we are missing one little part right here, um, which somehow disappeared. I don't know where it went. So. Yeah, I'm going to glue this part back on and um, put it away. And next week we will do the cockpit tub. Now I took a quick little look at the cockpit tub. It's 45 pieces, whereas the um, this was 66. So I think a little bit easier, not so much painting all these cables and stuff. I think it'd be a little bit straight, more straightforward next time around. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, if you're on the fence about buying this kit, I'll go ahead and buy it. It's just easy to just see from here on this alone without doing the rest of it. Just, you know, just enjoyment and just the level of detail and um, precision and just engineering on this thing it's, it's immense um, so yeah way better than any Tamiya 30 second scale kit so far you know in terms of this and I'm very very excited to work on the rest of the kit so thank you for joining me as always and I'll see you next week for part number two